They say that this is the best Android phone in the world. So how does it compare to the best iPhone? Well, today we are gonna compare everything from the design, the displays, the performance, speakers, thermals, cameras, and more. This year is an interesting one for Samsung because the S24 Ultra actually copies quite a bit from the iPhone. We have similar pull tabs, but they don't wanna work. Samsung's constantly making fun of Apple, but they keep copying it. And the S24 Ultra didn't change that much, but the things that did change are very weird ones. Now, right away, looking at the color, my goodness, this looks so similar to Apple's natural color, slightly warmer, but right away, this thing feels different in the hand. The sides are flat with a subtle curve, just like the iPhone, and now the display is flat as well. Samsung for years really cared about that curve, but they switch, and I have to say, it looks and it feels nice. Now, the frame is also made out of titanium, just like the iPhone. I like that it used aluminum before, it's lighter, and this thing actually is just only one gram lighter than before, even though it did get a little smaller and thinner. And even though they made fun of Apple's 5X camera compared to their 10X they've had for years, they now have a 5X camera, which we'll take a look at in just a bit. It is a little bit larger and heavier than the iPhone, and it also costs $100 more. But with that said, you do get that S Pen built in, and if you actually use it, it is nice, but personally, it just stays in the phone for me. Now, the one thing that I wish they would have copied from Apple is MagSafe with the new Qi 2 standard, but they did not build magnets into the phone like you can get on the iPhone, which makes it really nice and convenient. But thankfully, our sponsor Taurus has you covered with their O-Stand case that really makes this phone ultra. It's basically a case, a stand, a ring, and MagSafe all in one, instantly making your S24 Ultra or any other phone support MagSafe accessories like car chargers or Qi 2 power banks, and it can now magnetically stick to metal surfaces. The stand aspect ratio is great since you can prop it up in vertical mode to take selfies or watch shorts, as well as landscape mode for movies or videos. You can also use the ring as a finger grip and the case itself is very protective and durable with raised edges to protect the cameras while being very slim at the same time. Taurus also has their Diamond Shield screen protector, which is incredibly easy to install in three simple steps and it gives you solid protection with 9H hardness tempered glass, smooth touch, no color deviations, and high touch sensitivity. So definitely pick these up for your new S24 Ultra by using the link in the description below. Now looking at the front, I love how the new S24 Ultra looks with that flat screen. We now have even bezels all around, super thin, and it's a really nice clean look. Of course, the iPhone has those curved edges also with even bezels. But one thing the iPhone doesn't have is that tiny little cutout instead of that large dynamic island. Now, Samsung and Apple keep trading blows in terms of speaker quality, so let's go ahead and compare this new one. You guys let me know your thoughts down below, but one difference that I noticed is bass. The bass in this new Samsung is not really there. I feel like the old one sounded better, maybe because they made it thinner, I'm not sure, but overall I would say the iPhone does sound better. Getting into displays, one thing that I noticed is how much darker the display is in the black areas than the iPhone. Now I actually took off the screen protectors to make sure nothing was affecting it, and the Samsung has really, really good anti-reflectivity, which is why the color are so rich and dark. Now I maxed out the brightness on both because the Samsung is now rated up to 2,600 nits, better than the 2,000 of the iPhone. And looking at them, it does seem like the Samsung is brighter, just manually maxing it out. Dang guys, this is bright. And this is actually a first where the Samsung can actually beat it in a full white test. And then going outside in the sun, you could see how much brighter the Samsung is than the iPhone. It is actually really impressive. 
I thought the iPhone was the best at this, and it was, but the Samsung looks like it's years ahead, especially because of the nice anti-reflectivity coating. It just looks amazing. It makes the iPhone honestly look bad. And watching this HDR movie here, it looks incredible on the Samsung. The whole screen is brighter. We have better contrast, no issues with reflectivity. I mean, it is really amazing. I like the larger screen and we don't have the dynamic island. Uh, you actually have the full screen being used that could, because of the aspect ratio. If I was watching a movie, I would absolutely wanna watch on the Samsung. I mean, we just can't get over how incredible this display looks. And now let's get into performance. And the first thing I wanna test is the storage speed because Apple is starting to fall behind. Oh my goodness. Okay guys, so we have 1,514 for read on the iPhone compared to 2,746. That is like MacBook Pro levels of performance. Now for the right, we have 406 compared to 1,575. Dang, that is fast. Now in terms of CPUs, we have the three nanometer A17 Pro compared to the four nanometer Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, eight gigs compared to 12 of RAM. Let's go ahead and run our CPU benchmark. All right guys, this is crazy. In terms of single core score, we have a difference of 28%, but in multi-core score, it is practically the same. We have a difference of 83 points. That's within margin of error. And we have a four nanometer chip here in this phone that is performing so dang good. That is impressive. And now let's take a look at graphics. I have 3D Marks Wildlife Extreme Unlimited here, but we'll also do a ray tracing test after. And here we have 21.7 compared to 28.6 frames per second. That's a difference of 32%. So the iPhone is getting destroyed. Now, both of these do have ray tracing. So we have this new test called Solar Bay. Let's go ahead and run it. Now that test just finished running on the Samsung. So we've been benchmarking these. I wanna compare the temps. Um, I'm seeing 39 degrees Celsius on the Samsung and on the iPhone, 42 right over there. Dang, and you guys can see the hotspot. The Samsung is definitely running cooler. Now with that, they actually updated their whole thermal system. You have twice uh, the vapor chamber that's built into there. So we have better graphics performance that I showed you guys, and it's gonna stay cooler for longer. Now we have a result from Solar Bay right here, and we have 5,969 compared to 8,267 overall score. That is a 38% difference, even greater this time, meaning that the ray tracing on the Samsung is probably better than what Apple just finally added. And looking at the frame rates, you guys can see all the details there. Um, definitely much better on the Samsung. So if you care about gaming, Go for that. And now let's talk about the cameras. Both phones kept most of the lenses from last year, but they each got a new 5X zoom. Now in this first shot, this is actually a 2X portrait crop. And as you guys could see, there's some differences in color, um, some brightness on the face. I don't think either one looks great. And here's an ultra wide shot. Both are 12 megapixels. So let's see if we have any difference in detail. Um, honestly, the iPhone looks better. This is really waxy, but the HDR does look slightly better. Comparing the selfie shots, Samsung's has higher resolution, and honestly, I love how it looks. Brighter, nice, and crisp, but you guys let me know your thoughts. And now let's look at the 5X lenses. Samsung had a 10X forever, and now it's five, but it's 50 megapixel compared to 12. This shot looks very similar here but if we go ahead and zoom in a little bit and we look at the detail, I don't know guys, it doesn't look that much better to me. And this is in really good lighting. Same thing with this water tower or cell phone stuff on top. Yeah, it looks a little bit more detailed, but also looks a little bit over sharpened. Um, in the rocks. I don't know, maybe they should have stayed with the 10X lens. And here we have a 200 megapixel shot compared to the 48. And we definitely have a little bit more detail, 
but also more noise. Now, as you guys know, we love doing the blind camera comparison test because we have a wide variety of images and we have to guess without knowing which phone is which. So make sure you guys are subscribed because we will be doing that soon. So to answer the original question, can the S24 Ultra defeat the iPhone 15 Pro Max? Well, I think we have to agree with Vadim, yes. We were very impressed with the phone overall and add to that the fact that you do have an S Pen if you wanna use it, a lot of new AI features, and we have Wi-Fi 7 built in as well with the new modem. This is definitely the superior smartphone. Now, uh, software-wise, you can argue about that down in the comment section below, but we give this phone a big thumbs up. So go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those videos right over there. This has been Max, and we'll see you in the next one.